Welcome to the Hallie Elise Show, featuring your host, empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise. She is an author, psychic, and media personality, and has been listed as one of the top 100 psychics in America. Empowerment psychic Hallie Elise shares the spiritual, metaphysical, holistic, and magical powers of the universe. Follow Hallie on her website at HallieElise.com, and all her shows can be seen via live stream video. Now, here's your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. Good evening, everyone. Hallie sends her blessings and regrets for not being here this evening. She's off in divine service helping someone in need. So I am her stand-in, Lady Christopher Barrett, and I'm really excited to be here because I am here to announce The Midas Touch, my new best-selling co-authored book. It is with Joe Vitale from The Secret and a bunch of other fabulous authors. It pretty much reaches out the law of attraction, how gratitude and love can shift our lives into a better place. But I think the most wonderful thing to start with is how I created it. Because you see, everyone's been telling me for years to write a book because I've got stories to share. And I thought, all right, I'll make it my intention. I'm going to become a best-selling author. This was less than a year ago. So I signed up for the Hay House Writers <clears throat> Writing from Your Soul workshop. And I went with full intent and all excitement. It took me about two hours into the workshop to look like a deer in headlights. All right. There's this thing called a platform. So where you used to write your book proposal and send it into a publisher, now a publisher won't even look at your work unless you have this thing called a platform. Well, you're talking to someone who doesn't even have a cell phone. So I don't blog, I don't tweet, I'm pretty good on Facebook, but that's the extent of it. Your platform needs to be 20,000 email followers, uh, 20 to 50,000 Facebook followers, and so on. So this put me instantly into overwhelm, and I didn't quite know how I was going to actually manifest this. So I had been also at a fabulous seminar with Joe Dispenza. He talks about how energy begets energy. And we're all busy in law of attraction trying to create matter for matter. And that may work, but it's going to take a lot more time. So he teaches beautiful meditations and basically shows us that we start with energy. All right. And that energy then becomes an emotion that or no, excuse me, energy, feeling, which becomes an emotion, and over time, it becomes our personality. Most of this is set by the time we're seven years old. So how are we going to change our lives if we keep repeating the way we live them the same way every day? Getting up the same side of the bed, putting our pants on the same way, running to brush our teeth, our coffee, before we even think about it. So what we want to do is stick a, um, throw a stick in those spokes and start changing the way we live every day. All right. So the idea is when we go into the meditation, we start to become more of the space in which we are, our energy, leaving sort of our body and going into that space of deep consciousness, which is in the quantum field where anything is possible. All right, you hanging with me? So we're going to go to this infinite realm of possibilities. So I am diligently doing this meditation every day. And sure enough, <clears throat> I thought to myself before starting it one day, I'm really good at figuring out how to get in the side door of things. I live by my own rules. And I thought, why am I living by this rule that this is the only way you can get published more or less become a best-selling author. So let me jig it around, play with it. I go into the meditation, and I decide I'm Midas. All right? And so I'm in the uh, meditation, and everything I'm touching is turning to gold. And I'm happy, and I'm experiencing that emotion. All right? So I'm taking the energy, turning it into a feeling, creating an emotion over time that will uh, eventually manifest 
into my personality, therefore then creating that which I desire. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm very busy turning everything into gold, and I'm all excited and I'm playful in this meditation. And suddenly I look down to my side, and there's a coffee table. And on that coffee table is a book, and I'm an author in it. And it's a collaboration book with many other beautiful authors. And the book is held by one big guy. So somebody who really gives you the leg up out there in the world that makes it really credible. And I'm thinking the meditation, who would it be? So I said, you know what, we'll just let that go. I like this. We've opened up to new possibilities. So I come out of the meditation. I said, yeah, it's done. And I'm all excited. And I go about my day. Later on that evening, I go to collect my emails. And I have an email from Joe Vitale inviting me to submit an idea or a chapter for his up-and-coming book, The Midas Touch. Really? Can you imagine how I felt? I'm like, really? The Midas Touch? This is unbelievable. And so, because I had taken all these other courses, I had my title and I had my what's called a hook. So my title is Offerings, The Miraculous Power of a Simple Gesture. So I busily did it, and I submitted it, and I just said, I know this is going to be, and I get a letter back, you're accepted, and here's the cost. Oh, I didn't think about the cost, right? Because you have editing and publishing and printing and all the copies of the 200 books that I'm going to get, where, by the way, I'm on the cover with Joe Vitale. How fun is that? And I thought, all right, well, this just has to be. And since it's the Midas touch, and I did that meditation, I just have to trust and let it go. So the following day, I was on the phone with a client, and she's also doing the Joe Dispenza meditation. So we quite often share our experiences, and of course, I couldn't wait to tell her about this experience with the Midas touch. And I said, I'm just at the last leg of the manifestation. I'll keep you posted on how it goes. I'm just manifesting the, the, um, the money to pay for this. So I hung up the phone, and shortly after, the phone rang back, and it was her husband. And he said to me, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. We wouldn't be married. We wouldn't have these wonderful jobs that we love if it weren't for you. And so we want to be the ones to sponsor you. All right, so he wears a hearing aid now because I was like, what, are you serious? This is so exciting. And that's how that story goes. So that shows you just a fun manifestation, all right? And what happened is, you know, it took months to get the chapter together, and we officially became a best-selling author on Amazon, or authors, excuse me, in three different categories. We also got an award for the first best published book. So we're all very excited. What was also so miraculous is that all these other authors, it's like we're all in there serendipitously together because the messages that everyone has, I, I don't have my copies yet, but I can't wait to read all of theirs. And I brought a few of the names. Um, we have Yvonne Vasa. And his is about gratitude. And his title is The Field of a Hundred Harvests. And if you love life, she will love you back. And then Joshua Crabb, this is fun. His is one positive comment. And he talks about how his life changed through the power of positivity and writing out one positive comment a day. Now, I do that. I do mine in gratitude, but I think that is just such a surefire way to start changing the vibration of your life. And see, if we want to change things in our life, we have to change the actual vibration that we're radiating out, which we create from. So I think that's just a really powerful one. And then we have Mirko Pavovich. A bit, and his is a bit more technical, but he explains the vibrational mechanics of manifestation and how our thoughts and emotions become an experiential 
reality in our lives. So that's kind of really right there of what I was speaking to on the science end of it. Because it is proven that over time, as you do these empowerment type of meditations and you really practice moving into new feelings, it's not just an affirmation. It's so important to feel it, to see it. That's that your visualization. But to feel it that it becomes your emotion and you're living it as if it's already happened. This is going to quicken your way to manifest anything in your life and to shift anything. And this is where it gets all very um, exciting. We also have Tom and Sandra Barber. And they did the Think Solution. And then there is... Maureen Shelley Burns, who I believe is Minister Mo, and she was pretty amazing when I read her little clip on hers, and it's how anyone can overcome trauma and limitations and to learn to manifest their dreams and desires by using the law of attraction. Now, here's a woman that's a veteran that in her early 20s, she was gang raped by three men. And so you can imagine the trauma and the suffering that, and the limited mind thought through the post-traumatic stress that she endured for years. And then she started applying the simple skills of law of attraction to change her life. And so now she works deeply with people recovering from trauma, post-traumatic stress, etc. Anyway, we'll get back to you in just a moment. Wow, this looks really great. <laughs> Gosh, I've got to stop talking to myself. The Psychic Gallery on the first Monday of every month, 7.30 p.m. here in Boca Raton. Hmm, de-stress, connect with intuitive abilities, laugh, learn about psychic phenomena and get psychic messages. Psychic messages, whoo, where's the price? Here it is, only $25 at the door awesome how do i sign up oh easy go to hallieelise.com nice five dollars off online oh, i've got to call the girls and tell them about the psychic gallery on the first monday of the month great time 7 30 p.m perfect have to remember hallieelise.com for the psychic gallery You're listening to Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise, and she invites you to visit her website for more information about all that she does at HallieElise.com. Now, back to your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. Hi, Lady Christopher back here with you. And so now we're going to kind of continue a little bit about what's in the book in my chapter. So what would be the miraculous power of a simple gesture, an offering? Well, you know that throughout history, throughout every culture, every indigenous tribe, offerings are presented, maybe for a better connection to the divine. So in churches, you have, you light candles, that's considered an offering. In Native American, we have spirit plates where you gather food from the meal and you leave it out for the spirits. But how do we know those offerings are God? Well, I'm going to leave you something um, to read in the book. So I'll bring up a different uh, story, which is just an incredible one. I had a friend who was um, sort of on his way transitioning from this life, and he was in Arizona and I'm in Florida. So we were on the phone about an hour before he passed, and he was still pretty coherent. And I said to him, you know, good journey, I love you, you know, please be my guardian angel, um, and I'm going to leave you, he was a rummy from the Bahamas, a little shot of rum on the bridge that you built me is an offering when you pass. And I ask of you to <clears throat> bring me a sign that you're okay and that your transition was swift and that you're fine. And I added, but please, don't just make it like a dragonfly, all right? So we hung up, we said our I love yous and our goodbyes, and we hung up. And about an hour later, I felt, I felt that he had passed, 
and I went and I poured the rum and I put it on this beautiful bridge that he had built in my home or outside my home in the yard and I left it there and I went to bed I did a little dance on the bridge <laughs> and I went to bed so you know I woke up the next morning feeling the loss and the grief of such a great uh, friend be <clears throat> no longer with us and I went about my day and a girlfriend uh, came up to sort of hang with me by my pool and as we're there chatting and I'm sharing stories of him I look out over the pool and they're like a hundred dragonflies all right and I thought oh I have to go get my camera and take a picture of it and so I didn't want to move and miss the moment well half an hour goes by and I said this is ridiculous I actually have time to go get my camera by the time I went in got my camera and came out there was a thousand dragonflies over time the next few hours more and more and more dragonflies came it was so magical it was absolutely unbelievable unexplainable and she turned to me and actually said that's your friend isn't it <laughs> and I'm like I'm pretty clear that's a, a pretty good sign you know I said please don't just bring a dragonfly and I have just tribes of dragonflies in every color so that's sort of one example and I do offerings every day I have a candle lit I could put a flower in a bowl light some incense they're all different methods of offerings I want to stretch it a little bit further and say what we say to others and what we feel about others is also an offering so are you offering a compliment or criticism are you offering a smile when you go out or are you just rushed thinking about yourself did you ever think about living life slow enough to sort of be a vessel of an offering from the divine your your higher self your God self to give out to others because you know what if you start living that way sort of listening to that little voice inside that says take a right and go here instead of there you're gonna find yourself showing up exactly where you should be I live quite like that and more often than not when I take that right when I wanted to go left and I end up someplace I would never go to like Starbucks someone's in there turns around and they say lady Christopher I've just been praying to run into you I love you I need a hug from you and I'm there you are you're in the right place at the right time so we can always give offerings and our our greatest offering is our presence and in today's world with all this technology and everybody's down on their phones and texting nobody's really present anymore we've lost that connection and that's one of our biggest offerings is to be present for others as well as ourselves and so a blessing is an offering do you know that when you you do grace over food that's an offering because that's an offering of gratitude and so this is what's so beautiful about this book the Midas touch is that all of our stories in this book it's a collaboration as I mentioned but it's many authors all our stories tie in because the greatest gifts in life for ourselves and that which we can share is being present present to offer gratitude offer love offer taking over a friend's TV show when she can't be in town because she's helping somebody else so see this is how it works now you can also do offerings or like tithings so what do you tithe every month out of what you make do you hoard on to your money and hold it so tight yet your man you're trying to manifest a deeper flow you've got to excel that flow and so find something that you're passionate about and and an organization some nonprofit or something local and offer that out offer a tithing just a, a morsel out it could be a morsel to you and it could be an entire meal to somebody else I personally am committed to preserving nature 
and helping the animals and the poor stray dogs and the dogs in kill shelters and so my partner and I our big tithings go to places like the ASPCA or places that will actually really help and offering also is rescuing an animal adopting an animal rather than purchasing an animal this goes in so many ways but one of the biggest ones that I believe we as humans and our need to be right have sometimes the hardest one is forgiveness and I have so many people that come to me how can I forgive how can I forgive well forgiveness is the greatest offering and when we don't give it you know there's that old saying and I never get these right so excuse me as I fumble through it right is you know it's like holding on to poison and expecting the other person to drink it we're poisoning ourselves when we hold on to grievances when we hold on to resentment and we also stagnate our own growth as well as that other person's because we're holding them hostage to just a belief and a perception that we have without recognizing <clears throat> that we all have different perceptions of perhaps the same experience and so that when we forgive someone we don't necessarily have to call them and forgive them but we do the greatest offering is to forgive right from the depth of our heart and release them and then be grateful that this teacher brought this lesson to us to teach us a deeper strength <clears throat> excuse me in forgiveness now that's a great offering I like doing simple things for friends every once in a while or pretty much every day actually that's just a simple gesture and that's an offering and I have boundless boundless stories of giving offerings and magical unexplainable things happening I have one such story and we may run out of time but I'll try to tie it up I take people swimming in the Dominican Republic with humpback whales now that's an experience and years ago I used to be out there almost the entire season and when you come back you're kind of you know I, I get land sick some people get seasick I'm more a mermaid I get land sick right and I came and and I was just sort of offering one of my sacred gardens um, some offerings and blessings and the energy of the whales when I returned and all of a sudden I had this deep sense of sadness and I didn't know what it was and it was all the whales and I thought it was all the whales on the planet so I was in a bit of a panic because the grief was so deep and they said they were leaving the planet and I'm like please <coughs> don't leave the planet we're more people are waking up we love you we need you and it turned out uh, the next day that it actually was a huge stranding um, in southern Florida of a bunch of right whales um, due to the LFA sonar in the Navy and I'm sitting here as this information came to me well what am I gonna do with that I can't call Washington and say hey well I was meditating by my by my Buddha garden I got this message from the whales so I just have kind of sat with that one for years and just shared it as a lovely story the point of this story with the offerings is that within about a month right behind the Buddha this this thing was growing and it was a plant uh, or a weed and everybody wanted to pull it and I said you know I I'm, have a sneaky suspicion that this is something more well today it stands as this huge tree that is not found in Florida it is only from the Dominican Republic and it blossoms these incredible orange blossoms and this tree cried uh, it cried this tree grew from my tears because that night when I was praying and doing the offerings tears were just landing and I kept doing all the prayers for the earth and all the animals and humanity to awaken because we need to coexist you know we share this beautiful planet with so many and each one of us are linked and are just as important as any other species so this beautiful tree is now uh, on the land that I caretake that I live at and she's exquisite and she is this testimonial 
uh, something miraculous and magical happening uh, from doing offerings. It wasn't expected. It wasn't asked for. And so you'll see the more and more things as you give offerings and open up that there is something much larger and much more grand at play. You're going to open your heart to many, many more magical moments in your life. I get very excited like a kid. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe what happened today. And, you know, my friends will say, go hang out with yourself for a while as we do. You'll get used to it. But it, I never get used to it because I'm always so excited about it. Just like becoming a best-selling author in less than a year. It was less than a year ago that I made that intention. And so keep that in mind. We'll see you next week on The Hallie Lee Show. And it has been an honor and a privilege to be here tonight. Thank you so, so much. May the beauty of nature move your heart to preserve it. Be enchanted and delighted. Connect each week here on WNN for The Hallie Elise Show. Also on Facebook and at HallieElise.com. Thanks for tuning in. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its